Hello students, this is Dr. M. Bushnam, Assistant Professor in Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bengaluru. Hope all is well. Take care of your good health during this pandemic time. In today's session, we shall understand a topic of developmental biology. It is on the concept of regeneration. It's one of the most repeated concept in the previous question papers, uh, which would be for a major question. So it is important for you to learn. The objectives of today's session is to learn the types of regeneration with the examples and to understand the concept of regeneration in uh, the plan area. The contents includes under the concept of regeneration, definition and types, uh, namely morphalaxis and epimorphosis, along with the examples. And the uh, second concept is regeneration in planarians. Well, students, in the term regeneration, re means again, generation means formation. So, reformation of the last parts in the organism is generally referred as regeneration. In all organisms during their development, the germ layers consist of various dividing cells that differentiates into various body organs or body parts as they grow into the adult stage. So sometimes those body parts may get damaged or will be lost by some external forces. This causes the loss of organ in the adult organisms. But this loss will not be permanent in the organism. The physiology of the organism otherwise will not make the organism to keep it under the loss or the damage for a longer time. I mean, the lost parts of the body can be regained by the repair mechanism that happens within the um, body system. So this mechanism is generally referred as the process of regeneration. So the process of regeneration is commonly seen in the adult organisms when there is a damage to the organ or sometimes the loss of the uh, body parts takes place. Then how to define the process of regeneration? Regeneration is defined as the natural process of replacement of um, own pa uh, out parts are sometimes uh, renewed of the damaged or the lost parts of the body. So when you look at the diagram down in the, I'm sorry, the picture down in the slide, you can see towards the extreme uh, left, a complete organism of planaria, where there is a, a amputation or the damage is seen, where there is a cut in the body of the organism. Each of the cut section can develop into a newer organism by the process of regeneration. So hardly it will take 14 days of time for the complete regeneration of this fragment into 
the uh, organism as a whole. Students remember, regeneration takes place generally in the adult organisms where all the cells of the body would have entered into a permanent state of undifferentiation. That is a post embryonic stage we call it is. So regeneration is the reconstitution of the body parts that are lost during the post embryonic stage of life on a, of an organism. So it majorly includes uh, the embryological um, processes of redifferentiation such as uh, morphogenesis. I mean here the formation of external body parts then occurs the differentiation then follows the process of growth. So the process of regeneration is a kind of embryonic development that gets regained in the body of the adult organism. Um, generally, the examples of regeneration could be as what we cited uh, in the picture down towards the left side where you find a planaria, a newt, then hydra, then uh, fishes, then larvae uh, uh, of uh, reptiles, amphibians, etc. So towards the right side, we find the example of planaria where the body of planaria is cut into three pieces and each of the piece can regenerate the body parts okay, as a whole organism in future. Next, after we understanding the definition is the types of regeneration. So this is based on the mechanism of the cells that shows um, the type of regeneration in them. So this based on the cellular mechanism, we have regeneration of two types. Um, the first one is morphalaxis. Uh, it is a word derived from the Greek words. Morphos means external or outer appearance and alaxis or alizine means to have the change, to show the change. So the damaged parts of um, newly appearing parts of an organism generally are the last parts. Otherwise, whatever the parts that are lost by the organism will be regained by whatever the left out parts are seen for the organism. So here the existing left out tissues will reorganize or reestablish or reform the complete organ or the organisms. Uh, the best example here is regeneration that happens in hydra and even in planaria uh, that you can see in the top of the slide, the pictorial representation. The second type is epimorphosis. Uh, here in the second type, the differentiation of the damaged parts or regeneration of the damaged parts will occur with no doubt the left out parts of the body of the organism okay but here the cells that are already entered into the differentiation stage or a permanent differentiation stage would come back it will go back to the undifferentiation stage like that of an embryo it is like an adult uh, organism possessing uh, embryonic cells in them Okay, so, so the differentiated mass of cells will form the undifferentiated cell mass 
And this undifferentiated cell mass will involve in the formation or regeneration of the new organ that is last. So it is a complex process. Students remember in Marfil axis, whatever the left out fragment is there that will regenerate the complete organism. Okay, whereas in epimorphosis, the permanently differentiated cells will go back to the embryonic stage cells and from there it starts developing a new, uh, 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 newer organ that is lost. The best example is uh, regeneration that happens in the newts um, and even in the amphibians. So down is the picture where from left when you look at the first diagram shows the cut amputation. So part of their forelimb is cut. So it is leading to the formation of cut end where a mass of uh, dividing cells will accumulate in that damaged region, which we call it as blastema. So that from that blastema there arises the origin of a reformation of the last organ so that in the uh, extreme right you can find again the organ regained by the animal. So these two types are referred as the cellular mechanisms based on which the regeneration can be classified. Now you have in your syllabus after definition and example we need to know the concept of the types of regeneration. So now we shall understand the mechanism of the first type that is marphylaxis in brief. The word marphylaxis is derived from the Greek word marphos means external and alaxis means or alazin means to have change. So just now we have understood. So the existing or left out tissues of the damaged parts will involve in the formation of the complete organism or, or in simple we can say reorganization or remodeling or repatterning of the existing tissues will be involved in the regrowth of the last parts. So this process involves a very little new growth of the organisms and later the uh, uh, further growth of the organism can take place. In me, uh, I mean to say here when you look at the diagram down, you find towards the extreme left one hydra, the adult hydra, where it is cut into two uh, pieces, one head region, the other basal region. Each of this region will regain the last part only. So the upper part of the, I mean, the uh, fragment piece, we call it as anterior piece, will develop only the basal region. Whereas the lower basal region will develop only the uh, uh, upper hypostomy to say the, uh, the head region. Here what is happening is the apical part and the basal part whatever is last that part alone will be regained. So it will be tiny in size. Later to that you can find the extension or the growth of that tiny uh, organism will take place. So initially very uh, to a very negligible uh, uh, amount the cells gets added up so that it will regenerate the last part and later it grows into the adult. So you can look at the uh, extreme right side two uh, hydra that are seen are of tiny in size that will attain to the size of the adult organism later. So very less new growth is seen in the uh, marfil axis process but it is a completion of regain of the damaged part. So this is what we find and this marfil axis is commonly seen in the organisms of planaria and even in the 
hydra. So, regenerated individuals initially appears as tiny organisms <coughs> or smaller organisms. Later it grows in size and attains a, a normal size of an adult. So this is what we call it as a marphylaxis. Students remember here in marphylaxis there is proliferation of undifferentiated cells takes place. So, there are undifferentiated cells, <coughs> excuse me, which are left within the body of the organisms. Those undifferentiated cells are permanently seen in the adult organism till it dies. So, those undifferentiated, uh, undifferentiated cell mass will be involved in the regeneration process. So, these new cells have the power of regeneration and becomes multipotent. And these multipotent cells are collectively called as neoblasts, where neo means new, blast means the dividing cells that will reform the uh, organ structures. So neoblasts are unspecialized are undifferentiated cell mass. So here in the picture when you look at we find uh, a mass of cells from the adult organism. This neoblasts are again classified into different types which will involve in the regeneration of the organs respectively. So here is an example of regeneration uh, uh, towards the extreme left is the hydra and towards the right side down is the planaria where a small fragment will develop into the complete body of the organism. In case of planaria, when you look at down towards the um, right side, the complete body of planaria is divided into three pieces. Each of this piece is denoted as dark brown in color. So each of that piece will regenerate its uh, uh, damaged parts back with the light color that is mentioned here. So we find a very faster regeneration in the organisms of Hydra as well as Planaria. And that's the type of reproduction of a sexual type that we find in Planaria as well as uh, in Hydra. So this is the second type that we are going to understand of the regeneration type is epimorphosis. So as we have understood the concept early in the uh, session of today, it refers to the reversal of permanent differentiated cellular uh, stage to de-differentiation and re-differentiation stages by using the cell mass of undifferentiated cells. So the concept here that we uh, understand includes differentiation, undifferentiation, redifferentiation, and dedifferentiation. All these four terms you should be uh, aware of. The meaning of these four terms we should know. First one, we find after the process of um, um, A blastula, the development stage includes the gastrula, where three different germ layers are formed, namely outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm, and inner endoderm. Students remember these uh, germ layer cells will involve in the division further, that is, cleavage further, mitotic divisions further, uh, to generate the uh, cell layers. So the fate of different organs are developed from the germ layer uh, structures. This is what we call it as differentiation process. So the cell dividing cells of mitosis will now form the organs respectively. For example, 
ectoderm will give rise to the skin of the organism that is epidermis as well as the nervous system. So nervous system epidermis and their epidermal derivatives are derived from or formed from the germ layer ectoderm. So this is this germ layer cells of ectoderm are called uh, um, uh, undifferentiated cell mass and when it forms the respective organs which cannot further come back okay into undifferentiated cell state is called as differentiation so undifferentiated cell mass will give rise to the differentiated body organs so this is one concept sometimes what happens is that the differentiated permanently differentiated the cell mass can revert back to undifferentiated cell uh, 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 property. So differentiated cells can get back to undifferentiated condition. This is called as this is called as de-differentiation process. Are you able to follow? So differentiation process is formation of the organs. Okay. It is from undifferentiated cell mass. They are yet to differentiate. Now, so undifferentiated cell mass will form differentiated organs. Number one. Number two, sometimes the differentiated cell mass can revert back to the undifferentiated state. When? In the condition of regeneration is what you find. So this is called as de-differentiation. So after de-differentiation, the cells will come back to undifferentiated cells. Okay, now they again have to regenerate the last organs. So if it is epidermis, it should form the organs of this epidermis, I'm sorry, ectoderm, it should form the organs of the epidermis as well as the nervous system. So de-differentiated cell mass are now undifferentiated cell mass. It has to again differentiate. This is called redifferentiation. So in a sequence to arrange them, the process, first undifferentiated cell mass will form differentiated organs. So when differentiated organs undergoes damage, they uh, the cells there of the differentiated uh, condition will go back to the undifferentiated stage which we call it as de-differentiation which further undergoes the process of the regain of the last part by the formation of the organs a uh, reformation of the organs which we call it as redifferentiation so these four important uh, concepts you should be able to understand under the concept of epimorphosis so what's happening here the Differentiated cell mass gets formed from undifferentiated cells to generate the organs. When the organs undergoes the damage, they can again revert back to undifferentiated cell mass, which we call it as de-differentiation. So after de-differentiation, the cells will not be kept under undifferentiated condition for a long time. They will have to again reform the last organ through the process of this redifferentiation. So all these four processes occurs in the regeneration type called as epimorphosis. Are you able to follow? These four types are not seen in the first case. That is a morphalaxis where you find that different undifferentiated cells remains in the body of the adult organism permanently. So here and there throughout the body. So whenever there is a cut for the body of the organism, this undifferentiated cell mass will move to the side and regains or reforms that last part, which we call it as morphalaxis. But in epimorphosis, we find these four stages. So remember this concept. I think um, the process is clear for you. So the second type is of regeneration is epimorphosis. So as we understand the concept of epimorphosis, where the organ damage will lead to the formation of a cover at the site of damage. When there is a cut in the body of the organisms, 
like uh, newts or sometimes amphibians, reptiles. So that damaged part will have the formation of a new cover of epidermis. So this uh, is the first stage which we call it as wound healing. So the wound healing starts with the formation of an epidermis to cover um, the damaged part, number one. Number two, it will trigger further stages of the development of the organ or regeneration of the organ. Here, after the epidermis gets formed, a cell mass of undifferentiated condition will move to the site of damage. Now there, they accumulate to form a mass of cells, which we call it as conical hump or conical lump of uh, dividing cells. So this mass of um, uh, dividing cells or undifferentiated cell mass is now called as regeneration bud or regeneration blastema. I think the concept is clear students. In epimorphosis, when there is a cut or damage for the body of the organism or organ of the body of organism, there occurs first the wound healing by the formation of an epidermal cover. So once this epidermis is formed, the cells which are differentiated already will revert back to undifferentiated cells in that damaged region. So those cells which are undifferentiated cells now starts moving to the site below that epidermis and forms a lump or a mass of cells which we call it as regeneration bud or regeneration blastema. Now, the next stage is, so further de-differentiation of rest of cells are forms below the blastema and um, uh, at last, this de-differentiated cells, as I told you, de-differentiated cell mass uh, uh, refers to the differentiated cells goes back to the undifferentiated stage. So those cells are called de-differentiated cells. In simple words, they are the undifferentiated cell mass only, which are reversed now. So they again re-differentiates to uh, regain or reform the rudiment of the limb that is last. So as the uh, example what you find here. And um, here what happens is that, um, here is the example of a newt where the limb of the organism is amputed, it is cut. The cut part will immediately form the wound healing stage where epidermis gets covered. That will trigger the differentiated cells to undergo de-differentiation process and they accumulate below that epidermis to form regeneration bud or regeneration blastema. Now this regeneration blastema cells will re-differentiate to regain that organ. Students, here the bud formation and wound healing stages are the common stages of most of the organism during the process of regeneration. It is further um, followed by special stages like palate stage, then notch stage and finally a digit stage. in the regeneration of limb of newt. When you look at here, after the wound healing process, that is epidermis derivative, uh, epidermis is formed, the de-differentiated uh, uh, cells, that is cells which are capable of dividing now to regenerate the last organ, now will start accumulating to form a bud-like structure. So that will further to uh, forms a, a tiny limb, which we call it as rudimentary limb. That further shows the growth to form the uh, uh, limb structure of the organism. 
So here rudimentary part differentiates or regenerates the limb, which we call it as epimorphosis or epimorphic regeneration. So in the pig down, you can see the series of uh, stages in the reformation or regeneration of the last or amputed limb of the organism. Here in the picture down we can understand uh, a regeneration of limb of amphibians. After the loss of the limb by the amputation or cut, the wound healing takes place by the formation of a cover of epidermal cells on the wound. And this stage is followed by accumulation of um, dedifferentiated cell mass, which we call this regeneration bud or blastema stage. This stage where the dedifferentiation that is um, permanently differentiated cells will reverse their activity and becomes dividing cellular mass, which we call as blastema cells, will lead to the formation of a cone-like structure, which we call as <coughs> cone stage. Now further, the dividing cells will increase in their number and form a bulb-like structure. Cone-like structure now forms bulb-like because of the increasing uh, cell mass that gets accumulated in that part. So this bulb later forms a, a structure which is elongated, which we call it as the palate stage. The tip of the palate uh, bulb now shows the notching to form the digits that leads to the uh, notch stage later to the digit stage. At the end, a new limb gets formed of the organism which is lost. Students, remember here, permanently differentiated cells will lose their property and becomes dividing cells or proliferating cells. Later through this series of uh, stages of um, uh, regeneration, it will regenerate back the last limb. This is called as epimorphosis. I think the picture clearly gives us the idea of epimorphosis. With this, we complete the definition, the types and examples prescribed in your syllabus. So the next concept of your syllabus under regeneration is regeneration with reference to planaria we need to understand.